Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. I am Brother Joe Arsalferes of the Order of the Scouts Carmelite Secular. I am presently connected in the Cotabato State University as one of the program head in the graduate school. So I would like to share with you this presentation regarding the ecological solid waste management that's coming from our uh, law, Republic Act 1903. So let's talk about the so-called waste. What about this waste? What did you waste today? That's a question. All organic materials go through a breakdown or decaying process called decomposition. Inorganic materials, however, do not. They stay with us with for they stay with us for a long, long time. Some even pass our lifespan. So the next time you consume something, think about of the long term effect. Use only things you need. That's why a challenge to all of us. Let's consume wisely. Yung kailangan lang natin. Then, what about this waste? An example of this, how long until it's gone? The glass bottle, that's one million years bago mawala. The monofilament fishing net, that's 600 years. The plastic beverage bottles, that's 450 years. The disposable diapers, especially tayo may anak. That's 400 years bago mawala. Foam plastic, that's 80 years. The rubber boat sole, that's 50 to 80 years. And tin can, 50 years. The leather, that's 50 years. The nylon fabric, that's 30 to 40 years. The plastic film canister, that's 20 to 30 years. The plastic bag, that's 10 to 20 years. The cigarette filter, Five, one to five years, the plywood, one to three years, the wax milk cartoon, three months, the apple core, that's two months, the newspaper, six weeks, orange or banana pail, that's two to five weeks, the paper towel, that's two to four weeks. Kaya nga, that's all our waste. Organic, inorganic, then let's move on. There are solid waste. Most are visible to our environment, and that's true. Take note on this. The visible problem, you look at the drawing, The total annual generation, 10 million tons, mostly from the household and commercial establishment, yung waste natin. Then our present system of garbage, garbage disposal and not a waste management. This hakot or tambak system, also known as collect and system is not ecological. Bakit kaya not ecological? According to Dr. Mustafa Gulba, waste is a source, is a resource that is in the wrong place at the wrong time. Once it finds its rightful place, then it is just valuable as any other natural resources. So once again, waste is a resources that is in a wrong place at the wrong time. Once it finds its rightful place, then it is just valuable as any other natural resources. That's why a challenge is we have to throw our garbage properly. That's why this is more on the proper waste management. 
Then waste is not garbage because as Mustafa said, it can be valuable. The mixed waste is equal to garbage. Segregated waste, it can be a resources and, that's, and it can also be valuable. Who generates garbage? That's the next question. And I think we know who generates this garbage. The waste generation garbage is coming from where? Household, that's number one. The schools, offices, the businesses and other establishment, agriculture, the hospitals and industrial factories. That's now our situation in which the so-called waste coming from. Okay? Then how does it affect the environment as well as in our health? Then what are the impacts of the improper waste management? Pollution of air and water. That's one thing. It affects to air and water the pollution, contamination of rivers and lakes, the methane, the emission coming from decaying garbage, then causes global warming. So that's the result of this improper waste management. Second, the diseases, one of the impacts of the improper waste management. Typhoid fever, meningitis, diarrhea, tuberculosis, and the rest. The mosquitoes is also one with the malaria, yellow fever, and dengue. And in the Philippines, it's really our problem with this improper waste management. Nagdudulot talaga ng mga iba't ibang sakit. Another improper waste management, baha everywhere in the Philippines. Not only in the Philippines, but throughout the world. Disyerto nga binaha. Because of this improper waste management. Clogging of the drainage system. Salitation of rivers and creeks. Then the next improper impacts of the waste, improper waste management. The unpleasant surroundings. The foul odors. The loss of tourism because of the uh, pollutions. So that's because of the improper waste management. Then in Republic Act 1903, this is more on the Ecological Waste Management Act of 2000. So it was uh, promulgated and implemented on the year 2000. This Republic Act 1903. The objective, of course, is Public hygiene, health, reuse, recycle, recovery, energy generation, sustainable development, and aesthetics. We'll talk about beauty. Then, what is the Ecological Waste Management Act of 2004? That's Republic Act 1903. So, take note on this. The law aims for the reduction of solid waste through a, through a source reduction and waste mini mixation measures, treatment and disposal of solid waste in accordance with ecological sustainable principles. We can see that one referred to in section 2 of this law. So what about this institutional structure? From the Ecological Waste Management Act, so we have the National Solid Waste Management, the policy making body, then we have also the DNR, the technical support and the, of the environment. Then the, we have the waste generator citizen, na in which tayo din yon. Then of course, the local government. Okay, so those are the institutional structure when we talk about the solid, ecological solid waste management act. So there are four. Then... The Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000, take note with this invented, inverted triangle. It's 
establishment of material recovery facilities. What about this invented triangle? From residual management to treatment, recycle, reuse, reduce, avoidance. Take note the three R's. Then in the section 21 of Republic Act 1903, it talks about the mandatory segregation at waste, then mandatory collection, that's under section 1, then mandatory waste diversion goals of at least 25%, that's section 20, then establishment of material recoveries, that's in section 32. Then the conceptual framework of this Republic Act 1903, take note, from the generators, household, the hospitals, the businesses, the school, agriculture, in the first drawing above, then going down, we have the biodegradable waste, the recyclable waste, on the other side we have the spatial waste, then the residual waste. So saan yun galing din, pababa? To barangay, ito yung mag-action, the treater, then the separate collection schedule, and use the convertalized vehicle. Then sana, papunta sana sa garden, to the junk shop, the recycling plant, then to the city and municipalities role. In the other side, more the barangay role, kung saan yun mapupunta. So, these are the conceptual framework of the so-called uh, Republic Act 1903, the Solid Waste Management Ecological Act. Then the provision of this Republic Act 1903, the said the Act gives strong emphasis on the role of municipal as well as local government units providing for creation of solid waste management communities up to the barangay levels. This requires the participation of the non-government offices, people's organization, church leaders, schools, businesses, and the organization. So that's the provision. What about this waste qualification? We have the so-called compostable waste. This is the biodegradable waste, such as the food waste, the garden waste, as well as the animal waste. Example of this, the fruit and vegetables fillings, the leftover food, vegetable, the vegetables, the, the fish, the, the soft shells, the seeds, the leavens, and the rest. So that's more on compostable waste. So we can use that one bilang sinasabi nga pwedeng gawing abono. Then what about the recyclable waste? This refers to the waste material retrieved from the waste stream and from contamination that can still be converted into a suitable beneficial use. An example of this, the newspaper, the ferrous and the non-ferrous scrap, the metals, the What else? Cardboard, the aluminum, tin cans, the glass, the papers. So it's there in the drawing. What about this special waste? This refers to the household hazardous waste. Example of this, na talagang problema ito, the paints, the thinner, household batteries, lead acid batteries, the spray canisters. Consumers, etc. Okay, the consumers electronics, this refers to the word to worn out broken and discarded items. The white goods, which refers also to the last worn out, the broken house items, appliances, and the oils, the tires, etc. Ito yung mahirap talaga. Na hindi ko basta basta nabubulo. Ito yung mga special waste. We have also the so called the residual waste. The solid waste materials that are non compatible postable or non-recyclable. An example, the sanitary napkins galing sa kababaihan, the disposable diapers sa mga bata, the worn-out rugs, the ceramics, the candy wrappers and sachets, 
cartoons which contains the plastic lining usually used for milk and a joist containers and the rest. So this is the so-called, uh, an example of the residual waste. Then the Republic Act 1903 in the proper solid waste management so we had already the type of waste that we mentioned like plastic the paper the steel the bottles of glasses then the recyclable we mentioned that one the previous slide then what you can do so separate white paper from the colored paper fold carton boxes to save space do not let the garbage collectors gather paper waste when it rains paper once wet becomes compostable so let, let the plastic dry before placing them in a recyclable container so yun yung magagawa natin fold or cut the steel to save space then plastic bottles broken glasses into a sturdy container then one glass color per container wash or soak your plastic cans bottles or the broken glasses in water then re recycle from washing to clean and prevent insect inf infects infestations so yun yung pwedeng magagawa natin bilang mga isa sa mga pinagmulan sa tinatawag nating waste. Then, bawasan ang basurang itinatapon. Magsegregate. Ito yung palaging panawagan sa ating gobyerno. Ang nabubulok, ang recyclable, ang special, as well as yung di nabubulok na basura. So, alam na alam natin natin yun. Kailangan lang isegregate sila. Kaya ihiwalay sila. So, yun yung panawagan. Anong magagawa natin about the problem? In the solid waste composition, yan. Pwede yung gawin yan with this uh, graph. Food and other organics as 50%. The paper 12%. The plastic na pwede yung solid waste composition. So, yun yung nangyayari. It works with the analysis and characteristics of the survey. So, ito yung ganito kadami. Then, avoid generating waste. So, yun yung magagawa natin. Avoid generating waste. Then, panawagan, we have to practice the three R's. The reduce, reuse, recycle. Then, avoid buying disposable goods such as throw away or disposable items such as the resource, the toothbrush, and the rest, etc. Then, avoid the use of unnecessary packing. Then, consider the reusable items, then maintain and repair durable products, then reuse bags, containers, as well as unreusable items. So, yun yung magagawa natin. Avoid generating waste. Then, in avoiding generating waste, that also include the borrow, rent, or share items used infrequently. So, pwede yung magagawa din natin. Sell or donate goods instead of throwing them out. Pwede yung magawa din natin. Then, choose recyclable products and containers and recycle them. Then, select products made from recyclable materials than compost biodegradable waste. So, yan. The three R's, reusing, recycling, then composting. Para magiging abono. Kaya nga, ang ganda sana pag magawa. Then, another thing. And what we are going to do is segregate the at source. So you look at the drawing, degradable, biodegradable, na bubulok, hindi na bubulok, at sa pwedeng recycle. Yan. I think in all the institutions, if not all, mayroon ng ganito. In the barangays, yun yung problema sa mga barangay natin. Bakit nagka-problema? Isa lang yung tambakan natin sa bahay, sinesegregate natin. Pagdating sa tambakan, inisa. So, ano ngayon? Anong nangyari? So, there's a problem of this proper waste management. Nagiging improper tuloy. So, yun yung dapat titingnan din sa ating LGU.
Yan, the wave segregation. Malinaw yan. For the campuses and the buildings, sa mga schools, kahit sa ang schools, sana makikita yan. The segregation selection, yan, minsan may kumukuha. Then the material recovery facility. Itong material recovery facility, there are two main facility components of this material recovery facility. Hindi naman lahat ng mga barangay na may ganito. Ilan lang na meron. We have the composting area, the eco shed or the warehouse. Sa ibang barangay, ibang cities, mayroon na yan. But in our city, medyo wala pa ito. I don't know kung meron na. Kasi yung tambakan natin, wala pa rin nangyari. Tambakan pa rin. Then the material recovery facility donated. So ito na yun. May mga dinonate coming from the other countries. From the NGO. But that's in Davao City. In Buhangin. Meron na sa Davao. But the rest of the cities and the barangays wala. Ayan. The material recovery facility, pasalamat na meron na sila, then may garden na sila kasi yung nagagamit, yung composting nila, nagagamit nila. Next, anong magagawa din natin is the final disposal, the sanitary landfill. Provides control over the significant potential environment impacts arising from the disposal operation as it considers the physical as well as the hydrogeologic attributes of the site prior to the landfill development. Ang ganda, sana yan. Pero in the other cities as well as Cotabato City, may problema tayo. Then next, the management of residual, yun ang magagawa din natin. The development and promotion of the use of the innovative technology and approaches especially in the residual waste management for minimizations, if not eradication through the reuse or conversion negates the need to condemn fertile land to land filling and promotes the guest towards the zero waste management. So ito yung dapat gawin sa residual waste. So panawagan na magagawa natin, do not burn your waste. Karang karamihan talagang sinusunog ang waste. And that's the problem. It adds. Kaya nga, you cannot correct a mistake with another mistake. Pollution, the odor, air pollution. So, kaya nga, do not burn waste. Next, info campaign. Ito yung magagawa din natin. Advocacy, information, education, and communication campaign. Ako, as peace educator, one of our uh, magagawa is, of course, giving seminars as well as to the student, inform them in order to apply this law, the Republic Act 1903 on the Solid Waste Management para mapalaganap din natin. In the barangay, ganun din. Pwede nating magawa. Okay? The major problems in our solid waste management, the problem with waste management is not a system, but the behavior. Wow! Para sa ating lahat, it is not a problem of waste management, but the behavior of the people from politician, of course, until to the ordinary citizen, including me. Okay? Look at this drawing. Huwag magtapo ng basura dito. Ang mahuli hanggang dyan lang. Bugbog sarado daw. Pero tingnan nyo. Kakalungkot. Kahit saan lang. In the city, mga big time sana, mga mayayaman sa magagarang sara sa sakyan, bumibili ng pagkain, pag matapos inside the car, dapat itago nila doon, pero makita mo, tinatapon. Plastic and everything. So, that's the problem. Behavior sa mga citizen. Including politicians sa kasi kailangan itong willpower. Huwag magtapon, may multa, bugbog sarado, wala na pwedeng nangyari. Ano yung mga penalty of this provision? The minor, the grave, the minor offense. Ano-ano ito sila? The minor offense punishable by any, all of the following. Mababa ang fine from 100, then mag-attend lang ng seminar, that's a minor offense. Pero maganda lang din ito. Pero pagpalakihan siguro yung offense, yung punishment, ayan, 
para matauhan yung behavior mabago. The grave offense naman, punishable by all of the following, 1,000 to 3,000, the imprisonment, 15 to uh, 6 months, 15 days to 6 months. Pero what effect pa rin, until low lang ito, ito, but the implementation is really the problem. Okay? Yun yung mga batas din sa Pilipinas, that's really the problem. We have a lot of laws, especially in the environment. But the problem, hanggang papel lang. The implementation, walang willpower ang dapat mag-implement. Especially to our politicians. That's the challenge. Do not make law na walang klarong implementation. Ang magpatuwad, LGO, the city, may mga fines pero hanggang dyan lang. Pero walang uh, nahuhuli. That's the point. The major offense, 5,000 to 10,000 pesos at 200,000 pesos. Imprisonment, 1 to 6 years. Pero may nabilanggo na ba ang bot? That's the question now. We have the law, but who are the uh, the one who broke the, who break the law? Ayaw mga leader din natin. And that's the point. Kaya nga, it's true. It's a matter of behavior. It's not really the management, but the behavior of the citizen of the Republic of the Philippines. That includes to everyone. Okay? That's also a challenge yung gumagawa na. Example of the filament and environmental laws. So, yan sinasabi natin. Yan. The Commonwealth Act. Sabi ko, ang dami anti-dumping law. Katagal na ito. 1938. May naparusahan ba? Ambot. Sabi nga, prohibits the dumping into rivers of refuse, waste, matter, or substance of any kind. Punishment, imprisonment, not more than 6 months or by fine, not more than, hindi pa tayo pinanganak, 1938, hanggang law lang, anti-dumping law. Tingnan natin mga irrigation natin ngayon, mga kanal, nandoon lahat, mga basura, at saka ginawa pang mga figure sa katabi. That's really the problem. Ang dumi-dumi na. Anong magagawa? Do something is a challenge to our leaders. If it is coming from the behavior of the individuals, do something. Use your political will. Okay? Hindi lang yung magsisi kayo ng mga tao, ordinary people. Some, they do not know this law. Biro mo yan. We have 2,000 about the solid waste management law. Ito, ang tagal-tagal na -tagal, anti-dumping law. 1938. 19 kopong-kopong pa. Pero walang uh, nabilanggo dito. Then we have also another, the presidential decree. 1975, penalizes the improper disposal of garbage and another form of being dirty. Violators may be imprisoned for not less than five days and more than a year and pay a fine of not less than 100 to more than 200 pesos or both. <laughs> Kakatawa. Hindi pa tayo pinanganak. May batas na. Walang nangyari sa batas. May bagong batas 2,000. Sana may nangyari. Hinay-hinay lang. Then, another thing about the law of the environment. The Toxic Substance and Hazardous and the Nuclear Waste Control Act. Effective 1990. Medyo bago-bago pa ng konti. The mandates, the mandates the control and management of the import, manufacture, processing, distribution, use, transport, treatment, and disposal of toxic substances and hazardous nuclear waste in the country. May batas. So, ginawa din tayong tapunan ng ibang country. Australia, Canada, and the rest China, ginawa tayong basurahan. That's the problem. May batas, hindi na isa katuparan hanggang papel lang. Another batas, Republic Act 7160, the Local Government Code, 1991. Medyo bago-bago din. Then, mandates local government units to exercise the first function of responsibility in providing the basic services and facilities related to general hygiene, sanitation, beautification, and solid waste collection, transport, and disposal. Well, let's move on kasi ang dami ngang batas, pero hanggang batas, hanggang papel lang, walang implementation. Then another, we have the Pollution Control Law, Presidential Act 984. Then the implementation is specified in the DNR 
Administrative Order 24, Series of 1990, for water usage and water quality criteria, and the DNR Administrative Order 35, Series of 1990, on affluent regulation. Penalty 5,000 per day, but higher for juridical positions so violated this act. May na penalize na ba? That's another question. Another act, another law, the Clean Water Act of 2002. Oh, medyo bago pa. 2002. This shall institute a policy of sustainable development and the Holistic National Water Quality Management Program of fresh, brackish, and the marine resources. The penalty is 10,000 to 200,000 every day. Violation with 10% increase per year. So hanggang papel lang once again. But if we know the so-called proper waste management, if we have a good behavior, may mga best practices then. What are those the best practice? Take note, yan. They're using durable trash bins. Okay din yan. Yan, the best practice. Beautification, sana all. Okay, pwedeng gawin sa park, pwedeng gawin din sa bahay natin. Yan. Beautification, ang ganda sana kung marunong lang, kung may maabuting behavior ang mga tao, as well as the political leaders. Ayan. Yan. Plantitos, plantitas now. Di dapat pwede. Okay, maraming gumagawang ganyan. Na pwede pala. For beautification. Ayan. Napapawaw lang tayo. If we have a good attitude, good behavior. Especially in the proper waste management. Pwedeng mapakinabangan. Ayan. Wow, ang ganda. Kung ganito lang lahat sana, nabuhay sana ang Pilipinas. Ang batas na implement, ang batas hindi lang hanggang papel lang at walang napipinalize. Look at the re recyclable cans. Nagagamit pala. Ayan. ganda Yan mga cans The best practice na sana magawa nating lahat Ayan hanggang mapapawaw lang tayo. Ganda no? Mga katauhan sa Diyos, sana magbago ng ating mga behavior. Yan, na-recycle, ginawa. Marami nang gumagawa din ganito. Ayan, napapakinabangan, binibenta, nagkapera. Mga straw, soft drinks. Yan, marami nang gumagawa nito. Dapat tularan, especially yung mga walang ginagawa sa buhay, tapon dito, tapon doon lang. Then, to conclude, the Philippines generates 37 tons of the solid waste per day that threatens the health and safety of the people and the environment. It emits about 810 tons of methane every day in the atmosphere. Then the methane, alam natin, nakakasira din ito. The second most common greenhouse gas, 21 times the potency of the carbon dioxide. So talagang malala ito, nakakasira sa ating uh, ozone layer. Panawagan sa lahat, 
Magbabago na ang panahon, panahon na para magbago. Kaya nga, ulitin natin, hamon sa lahat, nagbabago na ang panahon, panahon na para magbago. So magbago tayo, tulungan na natin ang ating mother nature, ang ating environment, hindi lang environment, lahat tayo magtulong-tulungan para hindi tayo masisira dahil sa kagagawa nating lahat sa mga basura kung saan natin itinatapon. So with that, mga katauhan sa Diyos, I hope you learned something about how to manage the so-called uh, proper waste management. We have the law, sana the law, hindi lang sa papel. That's a challenge to all of us. We have to change our behavior. Nagbabago naman ang panahon. Sinasabi ko nga, ulitin natin, kailangan na rin, panahon na rin, para tayong lahat magbago. So, God bless everyone. I hope gawin natin ang dapat nating gawin bilang mga mamamayan sa ating pinakamamahal na bansang Pilipinas.